Yo, yo, what up, y'all? It's your boy, Fro. And today, I'm going to be talking about the 2024 prequel, The Platform 2, directed by the same director, Calder Gazutelu Urutia. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong, but ain't nothing to it but to do it. This time we're following a young lady named Perempuan, played by Melina Smith, and she finds herself in the same platform. She wakes up with a brutish man named Zamiatan, played by Hovik Kuchkerian, and they both quickly find out how cruel and unusual the living conditions are. Now right off the bat, I enjoyed the first film way more overall, but there are a couple ideas and moments that I enjoyed in this prequel. I did like the addition of portraying two different groups in the platform, the Barbarians and the Loyalists. Barbarians want to eat whatever they want, they want to take over whatever level they please, and the Loyalists want to abide more by the rules and preserve the food for as much people as they can. Petampuan at first sides with the Loyalists more, but finds herself not really taking either side as we go along the film. I like the one-armed lady Sahabat, played by Natalia Tenya, and she bands together with our leading lady, but I found her ultimate demise to be very depressing, especially after rooting for her character. She's pretty badass. She has one arm and she's grabbing metal bars and whipping some of the other prisoners' asses and some of the attacks. At first, I didn't like the Z brute guy, but he did start to warm up to me as we went along, and his chemistry with Petampuan did start to strengthen for me. And spoilers... But I did find his suicide to be very sad and effective as well, especially after growing a bit of a soft spot for the character. The creepy old guy from the first film, Trimagasi, he comes back in this prequel, and he's having a bunch of fun, noticeably. But it is a little bit distracting for me because he visibly got more older since the first film, and this is supposed to take place before. It is a little bit distracting, but it was nice to see him anyway because he was my favorite actor in the first film. The death scenes in this film are a bit more gorier, it's a little bit more violent, and especially when the prisoners are deciding to fight back against the system and more of the battle sequences, we have a couple of those in this prequel. But I felt the tension and the claustrophobic feeling more so in the previous film. I did like finding out a little bit more about the anointed ones and were introduced to a very creepy cult leader kind of guy by the name of Dogging Bobby. And he's pretty creepy. He has no eyes. He has a blindfold over him. And this guy gives out some pretty extreme harsh punishments and even deaths at some points in this movie. What he does to the one-armed lady character that I really liked is really messed up. And it made me want to see his character get his comeuppance. So spoilers again. When Dogging Bobby does eventually bite it when he dies, I thought it was very over underwhelming. I thought it was very disappointing and pretty quick. And I wanted to see a twisted character like this just get a bit of a more brutal death. Now getting to the ending, I did feel that this was a bit more rinse and repeat. Seeing how Petampuan finds herself in the same situation as Gorang, where she fights all the way to the bottom to protect the child. We do see a gang of creepy, zombie-looking people at the very, very bottom in this vast, open, dark space. They approach Petampuan and tell her that the key is the child and that her job is done, just like Trimagasi told Goreng in The Platform 1. Which brings me to my biggest personal problem with the film, which knocks down a big chunk of my rating as well. Who are the people all the way at the bottom? Are they the ones that escape through the years? Are they all dead? Are they hallucinations? Through the end credits, we do see a handful of others in the same situation as Petampuan and Gorang floating down to the very bottom protecting a child. But I'm still confused, mainly because we don't really get the answers of who's running this overall organization or this platform, who's the one that built it with their bare hands, what are the origins, at the very ending, we assume that Goreng is Petampuan's ex-boyfriend because they meet up and they have a big emotional hug. 
And I'm thinking to myself, if this is a prequel, why are we connecting them so fast? It felt like two seconds later after Petampuan touched down, Goldang touched down. So if this prequel literally takes place not too far apart, maybe I can understand it a bit more, but it's still ultimately very, very confusing for me. I can't admit maybe some things flew over my head and maybe the third film is going to answer all these questions that I have, but I went through two of these films just to ultimately feel unsatisfied with how this platform is being run. We find out that the cleanup crew, if you will, when they switch out the bodies and place them on different levels every other month, there's no gravity. They manage to trigger no gravity in the whole facility, and we see the cleanup crew floating through the air, taking the bodies, moving them to different levels. And I got to admit, I thought this was very laughable. I thought it was really cringy. I didn't love how it was executed. And I'm like, when? so the platform is Star Wars now? What the fuck is going on? The use of gravity definitely threw me off, and it gave me even more questions. They try to answer that, and then gave us even more questions with it. But overall, the acting is pretty solid throughout the film. The set design is still wonderful to look at in a very bleak and dark way. The blood and gore is a bit more flashy, which I never mind. And the storyline of the prisoners being trapped in the program still kept me interested overall. But the tremendous amount of questions that I still had for this prequel left me feeling very irritated and unsatisfied. And if we do have more questions answered in the third film, like I said, maybe I'll rate this one just a tad bit more. But for my first viewing, I'm going to give the platform 2 a 5.5 out of 10. And that's it, y'all. What do you think about this prequel? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you like it more than others? Or do you think this is a steaming pile of trash? I thought it was okay. I wanted to love it way more. And it's not great, but... I don't hate it. That's just my thoughts. And meantime, between time, I'm on to the next review. Thank you for watching. I appreciate y'all. Frotober continues on. I'm out.